Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Why are VIPs all of a sudden going to Antarctica? This is an article from 5 February talking about large passenger jets are landing in Antarctica more than ever before. Well, in the article, it doesn't really reveal it in the title. It shows something. This is a Titan Airways charter headed for Antarctica. Interesting name, don't you think? Titan Airways? It shows it configured for VIPs. Two person per row, leather seats, all this kind of stuff. They make the allegation that it's for a marathon, that people are going down there to just run around, to say they did. But there's all sorts of other airlines getting into the game. I believe this is uh, LATAM, LATAM flights, out of Santiago. There's Qantas, out of Sydney, or Melbourne, I hope I pronounced that right. And there's also Air New Zealand. Now, the reason I started this video this way today is because I wanted to talk about something kind of tangentially associated with this. You see, cold air is really, really good for planes taking off. However, birds, large birds, Look for warm air, primarily thermals. This is an article from some years ago that these people reported a giant bird with strength enough to pick up a 70-pound boy or 50-pound pig had been reported, but they also reported it only having an 8-foot wingspan. That would literally be impossible. Even if you had a plane that only had an 8-foot wingspan, you would be hard-pressed to get it off the ground with only an eight, I mean, just, it wouldn't happen. Now, what does this have to do with Antarctica? You would need something more along the lines of Argentavis Magnificens 
to be able to swoop down, still in flight, and grab something that big and fly away with it. But you see, the bird doesn't necessarily care whether it's carry out or eat in, so to speak. And this is a good image from that. This is from Russia. This is a golden eagle taking down a deer. Now, he's not trying to fly away with a deer. He's just attacking the deer. He's going to kill it and eat it on sight. A trail camera caught this. And this is a bird with an eight-foot wingspan. So could this thing take, if it can take down a deer, I bet it could take down a pig. Or possibly a small boy. So I think that was more an error in the reporting that these these birds, when they attack something this size, are not dreaming of flying away with it. And as you can see, it made quick work of this deer. However, there's a problem. These large eagles, large birds, predator birds, are very vulnerable once they're on the ground. It takes them an enormous amount of effort to get flying again, and... In a forest, it would be even more difficult. Now, the reason I chose this picture, this is a crowned eagle from Africa, is I want you to pay attention to the, the headdress. We find this in flying reptiles as well. Why, I don't exactly know. But it's something that's common to a lot of different bird species. This particular flying reptile, um, Quetzalcoatl, had to be very particular about where it landed. It either had to land high up in the mountains where it could, I guess, jump off a cliff and soar its way into flying, or they would land on the beach where the air coming off of the sea gave it a headwind so that it could kind of hop its way up into the air and then spread its wings and slowly gain altitude. <clears throat> the story of the Thunderbird comes from seeing a lot of these reports came from people seeing these birds right before a storm hit. Literally, they would hear the thunder and then see the bird. And that's how the, the name got associated. Thunderbirds. This is why. Because these giant birds ride thermals. This rising warm air. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are like, okay, we're five minutes in. What the hell does this have to do with Antarctica? Just stay with me. I had to go down this, this road. Large birds like this would look for places where there was really good lift. See how here this ridge is doing this? Anybody who's ever been in a glider knows how this works. So this is the concept now. These flying reptiles, there's three of them I want to talk about. Pterodactyl, Quetzalcoatl, actually four, Pteranodon, and Thalassodromius. All of them have those headdresses like I showed with the um, crowned eagle, right? Down in Antarctica, what do we know? We know that the surface is frozen. Very, very cold. However, we do know that underneath there is volcanic activity. There are vents and channels and tunnels that those who've been down there, science has reported, that they're in the 70s. So what would that mean? All of those cracks and crevices down there would have warm air racing to the surface. And it would create thermals. There would be all sorts of places dotted around Antarctica where warm air was rising through the cold air. And so large birds would have a way of finding this. Now, the first place that I found something like this was here. And a lot of people said, well, we don't know if that's really a flying bird or not. It really looks like a wingspan to me. It looks like the body with the neck. And it looks like you can even see the claws underneath. Now, this is not a new find, but I want to show a couple of others. Now, this one is only a partial, but I want you to look at the head shape. This is, of course, the wing, 
and you can see what might be the feathers trailing. But the, the most important thing is you see the head shape, you can see the beak, see this crowned part right here and the neck. Now, this by itself would be like, yeah, it's only one wing. It's because it's over a giant crevice, a giant cavern where there would be more than likely a thermal. Now, almost in the exact same shot with this one, there's another one over here. And what do we see? Look at the head shape. See the giant crowning like we see on Pteranodor, uh, par, pardon me, um, oh, the pterosaurs, I guess, pterodactyl, pteranodon, um, quetzalcoatl, and that fourth one, thalassodromias. And you can see the wingspan here. This is what I was going for. And there's one final one I wanted to show you. Once again, in the same region. This one, you can see both wings. Here, here, here's the head. You can see the body with the trailing talons behind it. Now, the wingspan, I'll get out and measure this real quick. We'll have to use the path function because we have, you know, two different directions to go here. From wingtip to the center of the body, 33 feet, and then I guess across to here, would be just under 70 feet. And yeah, that's a big bird. It would definitely need thermals to get going. I think that's why we're seeing more and more of this in Antarctica. Because with the melting, cracks, crevices, and fissures are opening up. And that heat, that trapped heat from underneath Antarctica, which I think has a lot more to do with the melting than any climate change does. Volcanic activity. All this kind of stuff is causing thermals. And they're able to get airborne again. And look at this whole region right here. It's just a series of huge cracks in the ice. You see, it's very hard to look up in the sky. Look at a bird. Unless you can identify what kind it is just by features, it's really hard to identify how big it is. Because you're looking at it against a giant blue sky. Well, looking down from a satellite toward Earth with the bird in between, it's, it's very difficult here because you have nothing but a white sheet underneath it. But we do have this ability to measure, and there's only one problem with using the measurement tool. The measurement tool assumes that the image that you're looking at is at ground level. So this bird might be much closer. And if it's closer to the camera, it might make it seem bigger than what it actually is. So when I measure this at 70 feet, it might not be all the way up to 70 feet. This bird could be at altitude. It's far closer to the camera than the camera believes it is. It believe The camera only sees the flat surface. So that's the problem. And given all of the other bird images that we've seen down here, historically, and there's dozens, and I mean dozens and dozens of references, images, I mean, I think it might be the most popular category. I mean, we've seen the skulls, you know, we've seen the dragons, which are kind of, I guess, part of it, but there is more imagery regarding birds in Antarctica than there is any other category. So I just wanted to cover this, show you, the, I'll of course give you all these locations. You can personally download Google Earth Pro to your own device. Of course, not a phone, not a tablet. It has to be a laptop or a computer. And you can take the coordinates that I give you and you can go look and see these things for yourself. No photoshopping, no enhanced imagery, and you can make up your own mind. 
So one final place we'll go is another skull. But this is the skull of what I believe to be a pterosaur. Now here we see, of course, we have the upper jaw. We have what looks like the classic beak. This one still has the teeth. We even have the area for the eyes. Just setting here on the eyes. So I guess the difference would be flying reptile versus flying bird, but with the idea of flight needing that rising warm air would be the, I guess, the theme of the video. And that's why it's likely in Antarctica and why what we're seeing may not just be shadows. Like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the Landesite off-world, sir? Thank you.